Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Shino Kim and I'm teaching about the life and the teaching of Jesus Christ. Maybe through the first class, I will be talking about the whole life of Jesus Christ and through the second class, the identity of Jesus Christ, who Jesus Christ is. And uh, number three, actually, lecture, uh, Jesus actually coming to uh, this uh, earth in order to forgive our sins. There is a sin problem with a human being and the human being uh, was uh, determined to send to maybe eternal punishment and Jesus came. And then through the class 4, actually Jesus saved from our sin, our uh, eternal uh, punishment. Through the actually number uh, Number six, maybe uh, last class, actually Jesus was a miracle uh, maker. Today, actually, I'm little bit talking about the healing of uh, Jesus Christ. That is uh, one of the main also issue in the modern day, because of the coronavirus, uh, yeah, pandemic, and uh, even in only in United States, uh, more than 700,000 people died because of a, a coronavirus. It, it is serious actually throughout the world still. And the health problem is one of our actually main issue. Uh, maybe many of you already concerned about this virus and uh, that's why we only have a, sometimes you, uh, we have a uh, crash through the online. Uh, it is extremely hard case that we have a, a class in, in classroom face to face actually crash it, it looks like uh, just now in, in most almost impossible because of this uh, disease this virus and uh, one thing that I after becoming a Christian uh, one thing that I was shocking is when I reading the Bible and I saw there are a lot of healing story done by Jesus Christ so I never heard of that previously not a single Christian, not a single pastor, not a single person explained that Jesus healed a lot of people. They never talk about this one. Even my Christian friends, when they preach the gospel to me, and they only say about my, my, my sins, you are a sinner, you, you are destined to send to uh, eternal punishment, hell. And uh, Jesus came to this world in order to save you, save you, uh, you from your sins. They only talking about sin, okay? How to, uh, how to solve the sin problem. That's why Jesus came to this world. But not a single Christian, my friends, said that Jesus is a great healer. They, they didn't talk about this one. But as soon as you, uh, after becoming a Christian, I realized that Jesus is one of, Jesus is a great healer. And there are also a lot of English book, Jesus Christ the Healer. Actually, the full, full, uh, four Gospels, actually, they're talking about the healing of Jesus Christ. The book of Matthew, the book of Mark, the book of Luke, the book of John. These four Gospel books, uh, detail, with detail, actually, they describe the healing of Jesus Christ. And there are a lot of healing stories in the Bible. If you uh, get any chance to read the Bible, try to read uh, from the book of Matthew and uh, Mark and uh, Luke and John. You, you can find there are a lot of uh, miraculous healing done by Jesus Christ. And I'm only, there are too many healing stories in the Bible. But today I choose only uh, three, around three stories uh, written in the Bible. And uh, Jesus opened the eyes of the blind man. There was a blind man from the beginning. When he was born, he was al already blind. He cannot say anything. His name is uh, Bartimaeus, uh, according to the Bible. So when we read the book of the Matthew chapter 10, let me read it. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. They are leaving the city. And a blind man called, his name is Bartimaeus, was sitting by the Lord's side begging. He was a blind man and he was a beggar. 
And when Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout because he cannot see and he cannot walk because he was blind. And he heard that Jesus was a great healer, and that's why he uh, yelling at Jesus Christ. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Be quiet, with dirty beggars, maybe other people talking about that. But he shouted all the more. But he wanna, he wanna be healed by Jesus Christ. That's why he raised his voice again. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, finally, Jesus heard, Jesus heard over the crying of the blind man Bartimaeus, and he stopped and they call him. So they call to the blind man, and they bring the blind man Bartimaeus to Jesus Christ. And Jesus, uh, cheer up on your feet, he is calling you. So. Uh, they bring the, uh, the blind man to Jesus Christ, and throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus Christ. And Jesus asked a question to him. What do you wanna, what do you wanna me to do for you? Even today, Jesus asking to you, what do you wanna me to do for you? Jesus asking to you, what do you wanna to answer? But this blind man, uh, actually uh, said that, the blind man said, Rabbi, I wanted to see. Of course, he is a blind man. And through his whole life, he never see. So that's why only his one hope is uh, singing with his eyes. That's why. So I wanted to see. And Jesus said, Go, your face has healed you. And as soon as he comment this one, immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the Lord. Isn't it an amazing story? Uh, maybe uh, many of you think that the, uh, this story is not a true story. Even maybe before being a Christian for a long, long actually uh, age, actually I didn't believe it. Me neither. How can we believe this story? But based on, on, on the uh, story of the Bible, actually Jesus uh, opened the eyes of the blind man, and this is not only one story. Even uh, Jesus healed 10 uh, lepers. Leper is, is, looks like a, a, a skin, a serious skin disease, even in the modern med medicine, cannot cure, still cannot cure leper. Maybe uh, if you don't know about the meaning of a leper, you can find some meaning through the, your vocabulary. And this is extremely severe uh, skin disease. Your skin going to rotten and there is no cure. And uh, long time ago, there are a lot of lepers. And according to the book of uh, Nook, chapter 17, as uh, Jesus was going into a village, 10 men who had a lot of sea met him. Uh, ten actually uh, people actually waiting for him. They stood at a distance and they called out in a loud voice, because at that time, the the lepers was considered of being cursed. They are cursed, and the lepers cannot live with uh, their family. They should live uh, far away, far away from their village. That's why they stood at a. They cannot. They cannot approach to Jesus Christ because it, it was forbidden. That's why they stood at a distance and called out. They yelling at Jesus, Master, have pity on us. They asking, please heal our lepers. And when Jesus saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And he just gave some simple actually commandment and. Uh, Ten lepers actually go, and uh, during going the, their way, they found that their skins were cleaned. Their leprosy was cured. And it was very, very surprising, actually, uh, miracles. And one of them, when they, when he saw he was healed, he completely, he looked at his skin and uh, it was cured. This is, looks like a baby skin now. And he coming back and praising God in a loud voice. Even uh, this is not only one story that uh, over the healing of lepers. There are a lot of healing stories, uh, healing of lepers story done by Jesus Christ. This is only one example. 
even modern, as I said, modern technology, modern medical technology cannot cure leper still. But with only one word, Jesus Christ cured the ten lepers. And there are a lot of also the other story. Uh, I, I will read one more stories. Jesus healed the sinners, especially a paralytic at, at a, a Kabanam. Kabanam is one, one, one the name of a village name. And uh, paralytic is uh, looks like you cannot move your body. You, your body was shocked and you only lie down and you cannot move your head uh, with your will and you, you lay down all, all the way. You cannot move your body. That is a paralytic. According to the book of Mark, chapter 2, some men came, bring to him a paralytic, his maybe friends. Several friends actually bring their, their uh, friends who, ha who was uh, par paralytic and carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, there are so many people. They made an opening, they go up to the roof and uh, after digging through it, they digging the roof. Oh my God! <laughs> they are destroying somebody's house, and the Lord road map the paralyzed man was lining on. Wow! What, the, what look at the, what they have done? They go up to the roof and uh, digging it and uh, lining down. And uh, when Jesus saw their face, Jesus was touched by their doing. And he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Before actually healing the paralytic, actually Jesus declared that your sins are forgiven. Because sometimes one of the uh, reasons of disease related to sin. That's why. So Jesus see the, the cause of sin. This man's sin coming from his sin. That's why. He cured first his uh, the cause of disease, so that's why Jesus Christ declared their son, your sins are forgiven. I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. And as soon as he declared it, he got up. The paralytic guy, he got up and took took his mat and walked out in full view of view of them all. There are so many people, maybe hundreds of people actually looking at this one, and. The, this amazed everybody and they praised God saying, We have never seen anything like this. Me, me neither. I never, I never see uh, think, uh, such a thing like that, okay? Through my whole life, even me. So Jesus Christ actually cured so many people, especially the, the sick person who cannot be cured by the medical doctor. He, he is a, a miraculous actually healer. Uh, a lot of stories are written in, in the Bible. And Jesus' healings, actually, he has power over disease. Uh, as I said, so many stories. Clean the leper. He opened the eyes of the blind. He caused the deaf to hear, even opened the ear and the fever to depart. Uh, and unloose the dumb tongue and speak. And caused the lamb to walk. The person who cannot walk suddenly uh, stood up and start uh, walking and he withered hands and chronic breathing, dropsy, palsy. Uh, there are so many disease names written in the Bible, and uh, Jesus Christ almost cured every every disease. He never failed according to the Bible. And uh, we must look at the the cause of disease, the reason of uh, disease, why we are sick. Maybe number one is virus. Yeah, coronavirus or uh, flu virus spread. It, it looks like virus is invisible, but spread through the air, and uh, we get the virus, and uh, we get sick, and some of them died. Of course, virus is uh, one of the cause of disease. And uh, number two is unclean atmosphere. Of course, you drink uh, uh, dirty water, and you 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 get sick, and uh, you never uh, wash your hands, and with dirty hand you eating, and you're gonna be sick again. You have some problem in, in your stomach. And number three, in modern world there are so many stress and emotional distress. So 
even we have a physical actually disease, but there are a lot of mental disease. So many people uh, get mental problem and they were sent to mental hospital. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, maybe you, uh, you, you are doing the, uh, your homework, you got stressed. <laughs> Stress is one of the main reasons of disease. And, uh, but only this, maybe three things, maybe medical uh, doctor, actually maybe they gonna explain about the cause of disease. But according to the Bible, there are another unseen, undiscovered uh, actually cause of a disease. What is that? The personal sin. Sickness, uh, uh, infirmity, often was a sin because of a personal sin. That's why we already look, uh, look at one story. A uh, paralytic man. He was, uh, he actually done a lot of uh, bad things. Maybe he steal. Maybe he hit somebody. And uh, he cheating a lot of people. He steal the money, maybe. That's why he got sick. And what, that's why Jesus Christ, hey son, your sins are forgiven. And after that, he cured uh, the disease. So, so one of the uh, cause of disease, uh, according to the Bible, is uh, sin, okay? So in order to be healed, maybe you confess your sin to uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, number five is demonic power. There are a lot of actually uh, evil spirit uh, written in the Bible. Maybe through the next actual request, I'm, I'm trying to explain about this issue, demonic power, some evil spirit. Yeah, that is also bring disease to a person. And Jesus Christ healed by his touch. Sometimes he touched it. He prayed, he put his hands on, on the sick person and he prayed. And the people, the sick was uh, cured. And sometimes by his command, do this one. Uh, maybe the second case, the, the ten lepers uh, go to the priest. He just gives short actually commandment to them. And as you said, they submit to themselves to uh, Jesus Christ's commandment. They were cured. Or by other, others' faith uh, in response to others' requests. Sometimes some, some serious uh, sick person cannot cannot come to Jesus Christ and uh, so that's why he sent the other person and the other person instead of the sick person came to Jesus Christ and asking for the healing and through that result the person who didn't come to Jesus Christ even he stay in his hospital or he stay in his house he was cu cured even though he didn't see Jesus Christ because he, sh he sent other persons or by his own initiative. He has a confession, he has a mercy, and he loves. Sometimes, yeah, some people, uh, one example, yeah, deaf and dumb, cannot see, cannot hear. So he doesn't know what happened because he, he cannot see and he cannot uh, hear. So in on that case, Jesus Christ uh, approached to him or her and cure, uh, cure him or her. And uh, what is the purpose of healing? Why Jesus Christ heal a lot of people? And uh, the first reason is to reveal the authority of Jesus Christ. Through the second, maybe uh, Christ actually we look for the what is Jesus Christ's identity? He is only only a male person, or he is the son of God. And uh, one of the purpose of healing is uh, Jesus Christ uh, wanted to show his authority as the Son of God. So according to the scripture, Bible, the Son of, God, Son of Man has authority on earth. So he wanted, he wanted to show his authority uh, proved by God. I am the Son of God. So as the Son of God, I have power over disease. That's why. So Jesus Christ command, rise up. Pick up your mat and go home. So he has authority as the son of God. He wanted to reveal his identity as the son of God. And number two, to reveal the arrival of the kingdom of God. Yeah, the power of uh, God uh, stay in this in this area. That means the uh, the kingdom of God is here. And number three, invite people into relationship with God. 
why Jesus Christ cured so many people. As soon as the sick person was cured, they followed Jesus Christ. They believe in Jesus Christ. And they believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And they become the follower of Jesus Christ. And they have a personal relationship with God. That's why, look at the Bible. Many people were cured and uh, they following Jesus Christ and they believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as the Savior. The power of evil uh, of a human being is broken. And yeah, I'm gonna actually uh, uh, relating to the evil spirit. Next actually class, I'm gonna teaching about this one. Jesus didn't want to just give, give health. He wanted to give, give an eternal life. So why Jesus cured? Why give the health to them? And that is one of the examples that there will be eternal life. There is eternal health in heaven. So that is only one of the examples. Uh, after our death, maybe we will see the eternal life. That uh, So as the symbol of eternal life, he showed the health. Okay? That, that's why Jesus Christ healed a lot of people. And uh, actually, uh, as also the uh, scholar, theologian, actually I write some books. And one of the books is relating to divine healing. That's why I, I can explain about this part. Uh, I, I was born in non-Christian family and uh, uh, almost until uh, 20 years old, I never been in a church. I never believe in God. I, I, I actually, I, I didn't know there is God. And uh, until that time, I believe this visible world uh, is the whole world. And after that, day, there is no life. I believe that. And uh, one day, I have some problem and uh, start praying to invisible God and and I prayed for three days and uh, suddenly I heard here I heard the voice of God and I become a believer and uh, unfortunately my parents actually they never go to the church through their whole life and I preach the gospel God is alive and you must go to the church but they object it and uh, even my father talked to me that you are crazy you are out of mind and don't come to home anymore. You, you look like a betray, betray our ancestor. Uh, because at the time, my whole family actually worshiping our ancestor. But I objected and I stopped believing Jesus Christ. There is no way to preach the gospel to my parents. Uh, even though I preach the gospel and send a letter and call to them, go to the church, but they never did it. They cannot accept Jesus Christ. But one day, actually, I heard that my mother was uh, seriously ill. She was uh, sick. And at the time, I read this scripture reading, the book of Mark, chapter 16. And these signs will be accompanied those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. I read this scripture one day. Look at the uh, last part. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Oh my God, this is true. Uh, so I believe it and uh, I accept uh, the word of God as true and uh, I go home. And it takes the, uh, around the five hours from uh, my, uh, at the time I, I live in Seoul and my parents live in countryside. And uh, I went, actually I arrived in my house and found that my mother was uh, seriously ill. And I started preaching the gospel. But my mother, stop it, stop it, I'm so sick. And uh, I'm, I talked to my mother, mom. If God is alive, God is going to heal you. So may I pray for you. And if you are healed, you must, you must go to church. You must go to church. 
So my mind, okay, 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 free, free, free. <laughs> and uh, I repeated it only I, at the time I, oh, I was uh, just a, a baby Christian. I only three months uh, baby Christian at the time. The thing that I only know is this uh, scripture, uh, scripture verse. So I put my hands on my mother and play like this one. God, you said, when they place their hands on sick person, they will get well. You promise it. Base, uh, I believe this world. That's why I place my hands on sick mother. And she will get well. I only repeated the uh, very simple sentence uh, only five times and uh, it takes only 30 seconds for me to finish my prayer and after that I don't know how to pray at the time and uh, finally I say Amen and uh, uh, I ask to my mother mom uh, how do you feel you get well do you think that yeah, you are healed and my mother replied to me what the heck it is? I'm still sick. I, I was puzzled. And I stood up and uh, go out of my the, the mother's room. And uh, I, I think that maybe I misread. I misunderstand this scripture reading. Or, uh, I don't know. I was, uh, I was extremely disappointed. And uh, I don't know what is the problem. Why she was not cured? Why she was not healed? I, I don't understand. And uh, when I almost uh, uh, get out of the room, and my mom suddenly she sit on and talk to me. Hey son, I feel better. Something dark heavy one actually press on me but as soon as you pray for me that thing left me and i feel better and she stood up oh my god i'm okay what a miracle it is this is actually my first actually divine healing experience after this actual experience, my mom stopped going to church and she became a believer because she was healed by the miraculous power. She, she knew it. So divine healing actually uh, is uh, give me another benefit for me to preach the gospel, especially to my family. My family become a Christian because of a healing of Jesus Christ. Jesus healed my mother. That's why my whole family become a Christian. And the uh, relationship between uh, belief and healing, how can we be healed? According to the book of Mark chapter 6, he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his says a, a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the village in a circuit teaching and uh, Jesus actually healed every village but he actually go his hometown and nobody believed it and he could not he, even Jesus could not heal them because they don't believe it only the person who tried to have a belief at the time Jesus can heal them there are another story there is a, a, a woman who was uh, all with uh, uh, hemorrhage. This is some kind of uh, 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 blood disease. You cut and uh, maybe some few minutes later, no more blood coming out. But uh, uh, hemorrhage continuously coming out. It, uh, the bleeding uh, didn't stop. It, it's a serious actually disease. But she actually believed that. Uh, if I could touch his cloak, his clothing, I shall be cured. She had faith. 
So she approached to Jesus Christ and grabbed his clothing. And Jesus saw her and encouraged her. Great daughter, your faith has saved you. She was cured. She, even though she was a little face in her mind, and I will, I will be cured if I touch his clothing. And she did it, and with that little face, actually, she, her disease was cured. So, how can we be healed? You should have a uh, uh, belief in Jesus Christ. And uh, how can we be healed also? Jesus healed all who came to ask him. Ask means, uh, in Christian vocabulary, pray. Pray. Uh, according to the book of Matthew, uh, Gananite woman, this is some also other uh, area, woman. And uh, uh, she actually coming to Jesus Christ because her daughter was extremely sick because of evil spirit. So she asked, have pity, my daughter is tormented by demon. My, my daughter was possessed by demon. She was seriously sick. And, but Jesus replied that, uh, I was sent out only to the lost sheep of Israel. Uh, but the, uh, the woman uh, insisted, Praise Lord, even the dog ate the scrap that fell from master's table. She considered herself as a dog. Yeah, yes, I'm dog. But even dog sometimes have mercy from their master. Please cure healing my daughters. And uh, Jesus Christ praised her face, her prayer. O oh, woman, great is your face. Let it be done as you said. Her daughter was cured. So asking, just asking is very simple. If you have a serious problem, just sit down and look up to heaven. God, I have this problem. Please help me. You just ask. He going to listen to you. According to the Bible, everybody who is seeking Jesus Christ, asking Jesus Christ, Jesus never object. Jesus never uh, refuse. He always accepts everybody's asking. It is also the promise of God. Many Christians, unfortunately, in the modern age, many Christians believe that healing is uh, stopped. Healing, no, there is no more healing in modern day. Many, even Christians, pastors, churches, they believe it. There, there is no healing in modern day. But do you think that's true? I don't think so. Uh, I, I don't know how many of you know about David Yonggi Cho. Actually, unfortunately, he died in, uh, almost months ago. And uh, he established the biggest church in the world in South Korea, in Seoul. And uh, the membership, only one church, uh, or maybe more than half a million, 500,000 people in, only, in, in one church. Can you imagine that? And uh, do you know the story of uh, David Yonggi Cho? He actually, he was uh, born in the Buddhist family. Yeah, long time ago, Buddhist and shamanism is very strong in my country. And uh, David Yonggi Cho was Buddhist. And uh, when he was uh, in senior high school, he got tuberculosis. That is a lung disease. And at the time, there is no way of cure. And uh, he was dying. But one day, uh, he had a sister, and the sister's fr friends visited him and gave him the Bible. And Yonggi Cho, he started reading the Bible, and he found that there are a lot of healing stories in the Bible. And he uh, start asking to invisible God, God, if you are real alive, my I, I wanna to live. Would you please healing my tuberculosis? He asking for several days, and suddenly he was cured. And uh, uh, after that experience, actually he become a pastor, and he established the Yale Full Gospel Church. And he started his ministry, divine healing ministry. He cured so many people. And he, he, he is uh, famous around the world. And his church, actually, one of the main theology is divine healing of Jesus Christ. So, 
Do you still think that there is no healing today? No, that's not true. Healing, the divine healing of God, still continuous, still present. When you repent your sins and you asking God, God will heal your disease. So David Yonggi Cho is one of the best examples that there is still the divine healing in modern day. And uh, the last part, how can I, how can I be healed? Little bit, I already talking about this one. Number one, recognize and believe in the healing, healing power of Jesus Christ. You must have a faith in Jesus Christ. Or if you don't have faith, just uh, uh, no, go to the number three, pray for healing. Just pray, pray that. People cry out to God for healing out of faith and the desperation. God, listen to your desperation prayer. Even though you don't believe in God and God, I am sick. I have a serious problem. Would you help me? Would you, would you heal my serious disease? Please help me. And you keep praying, maybe He gonna listen to you. But the best way is first have belief, have faith on Jesus Christ. And number two is uh, uh, live, li repent your sins, confess your sin to Jesus Christ. Because we already see one case, he sinned a lot and he was paralyzed. And that's why Jesus Christ, instead of uh, before actually healing him, actually he declared that your sins are forgiven. That's why sin is the cause of disease. That's why you confess your sin to God. So you asking to God, God, uh, I never believe in you. I have a little faith. Please forgive my sins. You, you may at, maybe confess your sins like that and uh, pray for healing. Keep praying for your healing, okay? Don't stop. And after you receiving the divine healing experience, experience about that, you must thanks to Jesus Christ and you keep your faith. Today, I'm a little bit uh, different, uh, delivered a different message because the modern church even though the many pastors believe that there is no miracle of God, even though there are a lot of miracle history in the Bible, they think that that thing happened only 2,000 years ago and never happened again. But that's not true. Still, God is healing. If you, you are sick and your friends, your friends and your parents, your family are sick, stop and you are uh, start believing in Jesus Christ and confess your sins and pray for them, okay? They're gonna experience healing in some day or instantly. This is the word of God. I, I do not, I don't want to deliver my personal thinking. But as you see, every word was written, written in the Bible and based on the Bible, I'm deliver the message of God to you and Jesus still hears you if you ask to him okay thank you see you next time